Here's a home that was built in 1970, and it's had some changes over that uh, period of time of decades. We're going to talk about something I discovered on the foundation that is very major, and the cladding and the siding. This is a block foundation wall, and as I approach the home, I notice that the top of the foundation wall is wrapped with aluminum, and this is block, so it has the holes on the top here. As a matter of fact, this part of the cladding was lifted when I got here, and you can see right on top of that block wall, that's where water's going to find its way in. So I explained to the client that's purchasing this home that this is an unusual application. Um, and as we go around, there are some areas with the foundation that um, stand out also. For instance, Right here, this is the main beam that goes down the center of this structure. It's exposed. The wood is exposed, and it's uh, on this gable end of this house. So that's holding up all the floor joists going side to side. Now on the block wall, there's other issues like step cracking. So right here you can see where the mortar is coming apart in between the block. Right in here, and right on down this way here. So as we get closer, to this corner here, some of the block is actually missing mortar. This one right here, I'll stick my hand right into that block of this foundation. And then, when you look at the top of this that is wrapped with this cladding aluminum, you'll notice that it's bowing. This side of this foundation is bowed in. So when we come back to this side here, again, the beam is gonna be right in the center that holds up all the flooring. So right here at this location, this block here has offsetting. You can actually see right here, see how it's offset? That means this foundation actually moved in and the beam stayed because the beam is not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna be pushed in or out. So technically, this is in the position it's supposed to be. Look at that. Then we have another location over here, once again, where the block has an open gap, where water can get in. Look at this ledge, and it goes right on down. And it may not show in the video, but this also has bowing. Now here in northern uh, regions of the United States, Michigan, winter conditions where there's snow and ice and freezing, there's a common thing that occurs, and that is when water flushes down to the foundation at the frost line, it can freeze, expand, and actually push the foundation in. Frost heaving is what it's referred as. So we have some of that going on in the basement, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. But again, coming back to this application, why was it installed this way? Then I realized, wait a minute, this final siding was not available in the 1970s. This is a newer cladding that was done. As I looked at the front and back porch, I noticed this gap here. It's perfectly outlined. This is the original porch. This was patched. Same with that side. You see the cutout? What I found was red brick. I believe this house had brick on it. And this brick was on that ledge all the way around on top of that foundation. And the cause of the potential of any damage to that brick probably was from settling and heaving of the foundation had caused damage to brick. And they probably decided to take that brick off and reclad it. But now you have this other issue with this sill plate area. So again, being in northern areas where there's snow accumulations, that snow can be this deep. And as it melts down, that water can find its way underneath this wrapped cladding. Let's go inside and take a look at the areas inside. Okay, we're going into the basement. I'm not turning the lights on because it's going to show and reveal the daylight that's coming through some of these areas. So, right here, this is where that beam was exposed on the exterior. And this block that is actually moved, you can see the daylight coming right through that area there. 
even on the window frames, you've got some daylight coming through right at the framing, so you got daylight coming in. Same with the other side. So again, where this beam comes all the way through, you're gonna start to see some of the differential right there, but once again, there's some daylight coming through right there and on the other side too. This is where water's gonna find its way in. Now let's take a look at the shifting of the block. So right here, this is what is referred as step cracking, and it's obvious. It goes up in a stair tread format. So step cracking, and that's because this wall has froze and heaved to the inside. You can actually see some of it on the floor joists. So here's your sill plate that goes on top of the foundation. Here's your floor joist. You see the gap here? Follow it. It disappears. The gap disappears. And that's because this wall has been pushed in. So here you're starting to see the step cracking. And now you can see differential here. This is where the beam rests. Look at that. And then we have the same thing here in this corner. This is where I was sticking my hand right through it. But So here you have the step cracking. Same thing here, step cracking. And then looking at the structural framing, once again, here's your sill plate. Look how. Then we go all the way down. This is where the wall pushed in. And now you don't see the sill plate. This is about it right here. And on this side, you're not seeing hardly anything. So that's how much this wall is actually heaved in on the back side of the house. And then we have the same thing on this corner. Once again, step cracking, shifting. Thanks for watching the video.